الحمد لله الحمد لله نستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا فمن يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله ارسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا اللهم صل على سيدنا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم رب زدني علما قال الله تعالى في القران الكريم اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم صبغة الله ومن احسن من الله صبغة ونحن له عابدون صدق الله العظيم The ayah of the Qur'an that I have just recited to you, this is the same ayah that we have been reciting as our theme ayah for the series that we are doing from the last few weeks. That we are starting all the way from Surah Al-Fatiha and the, and, the, and the point is to go all the way across looking at those ayahs from the Qur'an which talk about the actions of believers, so things that we should apply in our lives. And the actions of non-believers and hypocrites and the sinners, so things that we can refrain from. So that's why we are handpicking either ayahs or portions of ayahs which highlight that. So in this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, again, for those of us as a refresher, I'm going to give a meaning again, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and who could have a better way than the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the believers who are the Muslims who submit, they basically say in the end that نَحْنُ لَهُ abidun That indeed, we all worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in complete submission. The ayah that we have now come is the second, this is the 85th ayah of Surah Al-Baqarah. That's how, we, how far we came. This is a very important ayah because it reflects the mindset of a lot of people around us. Not just believers alone, people of the book in general if you look around. And also the Muslims. Where we look at the Allah's words, and if the Allah's word is against the way I think, I'll be like, okay, let me see if there is another meaning which I am a little bit more convinced with and I wouldn't have to change my ways. As opposed to changing myself in accordance with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks, I'm looking if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's book could be molded to the way I am. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about those kind of people even though the ayah is in the context of the people before us. But of course, they were the people of the book. And now we are the people of the book. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَفَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِبَعْضِ الْكِتَابِ وَتَكْفُرُونَ بِبَعْضِ Who are you? That you believe in some of the verses, and you do not believe in the other verses, because they go against your will? What kind of believer are you? أَفَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِبَعْضِ الْكِتَابِ وَتَكْفُرُونَ بِبَعْضِ Listen! فَمَا جَزَاءُ مَنْ يَفْعَلُ ذَلِكَ مِنْكُمْ And the one who does it, for such a person, there is nothing in this world. إِلَّا خِزْيٌ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَيَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ يُرَدُّونَ إِلَىٰ أَشَدِّ الْعَذَابِ And on the day of judgment, that person will going to be given severe punishment. Because this is the person that after understanding... And being a believer, decided to reject because he didn't want it to change. Or she didn't want it to change. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, don't think that Allah doesn't know what you're doing. إِنَّهُ عَلِيمٌ بِذَاتِ الصُّدُورِ He even knows what is in the core of your heart. So don't think that you can pretend to be someone that you are not. You can only fool the people around, but you can't fool Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَا يَخْدَعُونَ إِلَّا أَنفُسَهُمْ They do not cheat anybody but themselves. وَمَا اللَّهُ بِغَافِلٍ عَمَّا تَعْمَلُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is fully aware of what they're doing. 
Let's skip a few ayahs and move on to ayah number 107 of Surah Al-Baqarah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alam ta'lam. Do you not know already? This is a common knowledge. But those who choose not to understand, it's their fault. Alam ta'lam. Anna Allah lahu mulku samawati wal ard. It is the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to which everything belongs that's in the heaven, heavens and the earth. Now this word, two-letter word, lahu, is good enough to change the life of each and every one of us. Lahu. If we have a belief in lahu, then our iman will going to be like rock solid. Because lahu means it is he who owns everything. So a person who believes that I am the believer, I, am, I believe in the God who owns everything, you will see that level of trust that person would have in this deity that owns everything, created everything, runs everything, and everything will be answerable to this deity, and then will decide the fate of everybody. This iman that we speak about has to go in our hearts. And we need to have firm belief in Lahu mulku samawati wal ard. Wa ma lakum min dunillahi min waliyyin wa la nasir. And except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is no friend who can help you the way He can help you. What is the greatest help Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides for us or for this being is guidance. Once we are guided, it's our responsibility to do something. Now think about it, if I put my kid in school, there's some responsibility on the kid to work hard and progress. Is going to school enough? No. Is going to work enough? No. You have to go to work and then work. You have to go to school and then learn and progress. So there is some responsibility on the shoulder. So if we think that, oh, I'm a believer. No, that's not enough. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that those who have believed... And then those after believing have done good deeds. So the bottom line is believe and then do good deeds. Don't just do good deeds and don't just believe. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lays these foundations. There is a reason that Quran talks about words in certain order. And in some places Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Man taba. The one who repents and then believe, then does good deeds. Those are the people for whom I have prepared, I have prepared. Now think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has personally prepared Jannah. Because these are the people who are the people of taqwa. And for them Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that I prepared for the muttaqeen. Jannat, not just one, Jannat, many of them. And they are in a form that's beyond imagination. And this is in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that what it has, it's beyond your imagination. No eye has witnessed it. No ear has seen it. No heart has thought of it. You will see when you will see, and then you will believe what you are looking at, and then you will be shocked. Really? All this for me? And that's exactly what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, listen, وَلِلَّهِ الْمَشْرِقُ وَالْمَغْرِبُ From east all the way to the west is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's. فَأَيْنَ مَا تَوَلُّوا فَثَمَّ وَجْهُ اللَّهِ Wherever you turn around, you will going to find this Lord. You can't run away from him. So when you can't run away from him, why don't you submit? That's a human behavior, right? 
We have learned in the history when people can't run away, they surrender. We can't run away from him. So why don't we surrender and submit? Submit to his will and live a life the way he wants us to live a life. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very clearly says, do not try to impress other people around you. That is another problem with us. That we try to impress other people. Not in the, just in the Western world, all over the world. People are living life for somebody. The only deity to be impressed is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we are not trying to impress Him. We are trying to impress others. So if we look back at ourselves, our hearts have hardened. The reason is because we are trying to impress the wrong people. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَلَا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَطْمَئِنُّ الْقُلُوبِ My remembrance is supposed to calm you down. But if it's not calming you down, check back, something is wrong. You know, when you go to a doctor, he writes some tests. You go through a series of tests, everything is fine, and you say that the problem persists. He gives some more tests. He gives some more tests. Till they can figure out the problem. We have run through the first test. We don't see anything wrong, but the problem persists. But we're not planning on going for the next test. We don't want to sit and figure out what is wrong with me. Each of a, one of us is unique, is individual, unique. We need to sit and spend some time with ourselves, which is something that we don't do. To us, spending time with ourselves means, I want to watch football. I want to catch that night show that was recorded for me. That is not spending time with yourself. Spending time with yourself is to ponder. Try to know yourself. Who am I? Sometimes sit down and think about it. Who am I and what have I become? It's very philosophical. It may sound very philosophical to you. But it is very important for an individual to know his or herself. To solve the problems that you and I are going through. Why do I get so angry all the time? Why do I lose temper? Why do I love to backbite? Why am I so cunning? Why am I so miser? Why am I so mad? Why do I have fun teasing other people? What's wrong with me? How can I have fun making other people cry? There's something wrong with me psychologically. Why? Is this how I was brought up? Is this how the people around me? Then I must take a back seat and figure out how can I come out of that state? If I'm doing something good, how can I improve? So the school system that we get entered in as a kindergartner, as a first grader, that school system is basically a system of life. In a way... Because once you get a good grade, you got to maintain it. So once you start doing good, we got to maintain it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the next ayah that I want to share with you is ayah number 124. The other people will not be happy with you until and unless you start following their ways. And if you follow their ways, then what's the point of giving you guidance? The point of giving you guidance is that you please me. Don't follow the other people and try to please them. Because if they were so guided, what was the point of sending another book? The point of sending another book is that you are guided. So hold on to it. وَلَن تَرْضَى عَنكَ الْيَهُودُ وَلَا النَّصَارَى حَتَّى تَتَّبِعَ مِلَّتَهُمْ قُلْ O Prophet, tell these people 
Inna huda Allahi huwa al-huda. The guidance that have come to you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the true and the pure guidance. وَلَئِنِ اتَّبَعْتَ أَهْوَاءَهُمْ بَعْدَ الَّذِي جَاكَ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ And anybody who still obeys his or her wishes, his nafs, his desires, even after receiving the knowledge, مَا لَكَ مِنَ اللَّهِ مِنْ وَلِيُّ وَلَا نَصِيرٌ There will be no help for him. And if Allah withdraws his hand from such an individual, then there is no help. There is no help. مَنْ يَهْدِهِ اللَّهِ The one that Allah guides, there is nobody who can misguide that person. And the one Allah refrains from guiding, Allah takes his hands off. And there is nobody to guide that person. That's why we raise our hands in dua and say, رَبَّنَا لَا تُزِقْ قُلُوبَنَا بَعْدَ إِذْ هَدَيْتَنَا O Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do not make our hearts go twisted, turn around towards wrong path after we are guided. That's a very important dua that we all must say as frequently as possible and ask for Allah's mercy. رَبَّنَا لَا تُزِقْ قُلُوبَنَا بَعْدَ إِذْ هَدَيْتَنَا وَهَبْ لَنَا مِنْ لَدُنْكَ الرَّحْمَةَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, please have your mercy on us. Because it is by His mercy that we are guided. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Do not follow and try to please others. And remember one thing. <clears throat> I'm moving forward to ayah number 134 of Surah Al-Baqarah. Tilka ummatun qad khalat. The people before you are gone. Lahama kasabat. Whatever they earn, they took it. Walakum ma kasabtum. Whatever you will earn, you will take with you. Wala tusaluna amma kanu ya'amalun. We will not going to ask you what they were doing. And if you look around, unfortunately, a lot of the people are busy fighting over others. Rather than fixing themselves, <clears throat> is it really worth it? It's not. We got to fix ourselves. Then fighting over those who are gone. Because they're answerable of what they did. And we have to answer what we are doing. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in ayah number 152, فَذْكُرُونِ you remember me, and I will remember you. وَاشْكُرُوا لِي وَلَا تَكْفُرُونَ Be thankful to me, and do not commit kufr against me. What is kufr? Kufr means, in its core, meaning denial. The person who understands, recognizes, and believes in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot deny them. And guidance is a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we fold our hands in the salah and we say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, it is not just about food and house and cars and dresses and children and family. Guidance. Guidance is a core. If it's not there, none of these things matter. None of these things matter. We have seen kings worth billions of dollars shot in the streets of their own countries by their own people. And they had billions of dollars sitting in the bank. What did that do to them? Nothing. Gone. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is over and over telling us, look at yourself. What are you doing? And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, remember me, I shall remember you, I'm going to close out with this beautiful narration. That is reported by Imam Bukhari and Imam Muslim. Muttafaqun alayh between the two shuyukh of hadith. Abi Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrates it. 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has some angels. Their only job is to roam around in the planet and look for the people who are remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's all they do. And then when they find a group of people in that state, they come and sit with them. They hide them with their wings until the area between the earth and the sky is filled with angels. They keep sitting with these people till these people decide to disperse. When these people disperse and the angel's duty is over, they go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is alim, al-alim, knows everything but still أَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرْكُمْ You remember me, I'll remember you. Ha- asks the angel, how did you find my servants? He said, oh, we found them remembering you. He said, okay. What do they want? They said, well, they want to stay away from the hellfire. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, have they seen it? He said, no, 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 they haven't seen it. Then what if they see how much they ask to stay away from it? What else do they ask for? They ask for Jannah. Oh, have they seen my Jannah? No, they haven't seen your Jannah, Ya Rabb. So what if they would have to see my Jannah? How much they would have wanted it? What else do they want? They want your pleasement. Allahu Akbar. And Allah says, grant them everything that they want. Grant them. And the angels say, there was a man over there. He had no intention of coming and joining them. He just happened to arrive at the scene and he decided to sit among them. What should we do about this person? He was a late arriver. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, for the sake of those who were there from the beginning, I shall also forgive him and enter him in Jannah. Subhanallah. This is the Rabb. Sari'u. Run towards His mercy. Run towards His forgiveness. He's willing to forgive. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisa'il al-muslimin fa-staghfiruhu innahu huwa al-ghafur rahim.